Humanisms Humanism in general usage is a belief in human-based morality implying atheism. In literary usage, it is a focus on the human beyond the supernatural. At the center of humanism is the idea of humans as unique, the idea of humans as distinct from animals. Humanist discourse in these early forms was preoccupied with what makes one human. This has been the subject of countless works of literature. The monsters of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and Brahm Stoker's Dracula have evolved into a specific concern for the monstrous or what Jeffrey Jerome Cohen has referred to as monster theory. The monster is always more than itself. It is always a cultural metaphor and always a figure that escapes and exceeds the limits of the culture that demonizes it, threatening order and promising change. In the 20th century and later, the idea of humanism and its preoccupation with human uniqueness has strongly been critiqued. In particular, humanism has been criticized by post-colonial and feminist scholars who have emphasized the ways in which the notion of the human has often been used to define a non-human other or a subject less than human in order to maintain the power and authority of particular groups in society. The monster is often, in fact, human and what it stands for is often a human subject that is being denied justice or expression. Non-human races and women have historically been represented as less human or more animal or monstrous in order to justify mistreatment and prejudice. More recently, he criticism of humanism has been expanded by other groups such as those working in disability studies, who emphasize the ways in which the idea of human and the privileging it efforts rests on the idea of a perfect and healthy body. Humanism continues to be relevant, particularly in the context of ethical and moral criticism. This is because humanism offers a philosophy of moral goodness that exists outside religious teaching with particular relevance in the contemporary period, but also at any point and in any context in which there has been religious doubt. Oxford professor Richard Dawkins outlines in his book The Selfish Gene the idea that belief systems as well as physical characteristics might be inherited. For this kind of inheritance, Dawkins uses the term meme, the cultural equivalent to gene, referring to an idea or value that is passed down, inherited and which is modified and evolves. Through Dawkins's ideas, it is possible to consider how populations inherit moral values so that they no longer depend on religious belief or teaching. In this sense, Dawkins's ideas are relevant to the humanist interest in how humans treat one another outside reference to the supernatural. Liberal humanism considers literature is not specific to one cultural context, but rather has a universal value or truth, the uncovering of which serves a moral purpose. With the advent of reader response criticism, liberal humanism was subject to the same criticisms as humanism more generally, namely that its idea of the human was limited to white male privileged subjects. In this respect, a critique of humanism is also a critique of those reading practices that fail to account for the varied ways in which texts are consumed and the multiple possible effects that they may have. Humanism sees language as an expression of truths about the world that already exists. It sees language as secondary to the reality of the material world. In this context, literature can be a powerful teller of truths about the world, as Arnold and Lewis expressed, but it does not shape that world. Part of the critique of humanism is also a critique of what comes from this attitude to language questioning the idea that there is one single meaning to a text, a truth to be uncovered by a correct reader, an authorial intention. 
and one single good that exists outside the complexities of individual identities and circumstances. In critiquing humanism, we also advance the idea of multiple readings, multiple truths, and the awareness that how we explain the world not only reflects it, but also has a role in shaping it. Planetary humanism, recognizing its moral potential, some critics have attempted to recuperate the idea of humanism to incorporate those human subjects conventionally othered by humanist ideas. The most notable example of this is British sociologist Paul Gilroy's idea of universal, gender and color blind, planetary humanism. The world we live in is driven by the visual presence of other people, which makes it hard to think about them beyond their physical attributes, such as clothing, hair and skin color, that signify difference. This is replicated in artworks, film, television and to some extent in theatre. In contrast, written literature has the potential to evade some of these categories because it can choose to what extent it makes the visual available to the reader through different levels of description. In doing so, it stages an imaginative intervention which can prompt the reader perhaps to try to imagine what seems impossible. A world where differences such as race, gender and some types of visible disability are no longer perceived. Post-humanism. While humanism supposes a unique human subject, advances in science have come to question human uniqueness. This leads to the two related terms of transhumanism and posthumanism. Transhumanism refers to the idea that the human can transcend the limitations of human biology to become more than human. Posthumanism recognizes the increasing complication of the idea of the human with a more democratic idea of going beyond. For posthumanists, it is increasingly difficult to separate the human from the technological and virtual world that surrounds it. Cyborg Manifesto at the center of the post-human blurring of human and machine is a fascination with robots or what is referred to as cyborgs, beings that fuse robo parts with the biological. The idea of the cyborg is much more than the stuff of science fiction. It exists in everyday life in the electronic implants mechanical limbs and virtual reality glasses that connect us to the technological world in intimate and life-defining ways. In her essay, A Cyborg Manifesto, the influential postmodern thinker Donna Haraway looks at the consequences of thinking through the idea of the cyborg towards wider questions of ethics and identity. In this essay, Haraway examines the figure of the cyborg as a symbol of the blending of discrete boundaries between human and machine. The cyborg's revolutionary potential lies in part because it breaks the rules of what has come before it. It pays no attention to religious discourse or the laws of the family, for example. Its morality is therefore unique and uninfluenced by past ideologies and its relation to others is not driven by the kinds of familial patterns outlined by Freud. This means that the cyborg can create relations that change racial, religious, patriarchal and class-based prejudices. In particular, by being neither human nor machine, the cyborg, in a similar way to the monster, questions the neat categories, taxonomies into which society divides things. These categories are for Haraway the foundation of the process of othering, which splits the world into those who are dominant and the others, without power or influence. By questioning these categories, the cyborg opens up the possibility of a world in which traditional structures of power are no longer able to maintain their dominance. It is a chaotic, disruptive force which breaks down established divisions.